We should be live now. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait till this pop up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they always give me this Donald Trump ad on YouTube, man. Wow. Always give me this. Um, crazy era we living in. He um he's in my algorithm for some reason. Oh, man. Weird, right? Weird. Let me, I'm trying to see how that okay, here we go. All right, family. Let me just get to uh some great businesses that I want you guys to support real quick while we let people uh fill in the chat room. All right, first and foremost, man, I want to say what's up to Spiritually Lit Candles. I showed you guys the candle last time on the show. It's actually a color changer candle, and it's great if you're into meditation. So uh, the website is there, spirituallylitportal.com. Make sure you support them. Shout out to King Simon. As I always say, when it comes to numerology, this is the man to talk to. Make sure you call the brother if you got any questions dealing with numerology and jobs or relationships and health or whatever it may be. Of course, the book Magic Money is an amazing ebook that is out of print and you can't find it online. You can hit up my cash app if you want some spiritual techniques to manifest money in your life because it's actually a spiritual principle no matter how physical we uh, think it is. So you can hit up the cash app, dollar sign Black Magic 363. It's a $10 fee and uh, just make sure you leave your email and I, uh, I'll ship it, I'll email it right over to you. Also quality handmade soaps. Uh, we got some natural lotion, bath bombs, body butters, whoop cream, I mean, whoop sugar scrubs, um, all types of stuff for your skin. You know, that's the largest organ and it's very important that we get away from the traditional products that we use in Rite Aid that does damage to our skin. So make sure you hit up the folks at quality handmade soaps. And of course, ancient herbal care. They also have the creams for the body and their products and ingredients come from all over the world. So go to ancientherbalcare.com and support those folks over there. Also shout out to Mike, he got the crowns for the fellas or the ladies that are interested in the crowns and you want your jewelry and your crystals on it, make sure you contact Copper Child Mike. Also Riverside Tai Chi. If you need help with your joints, make sure you hit up the website, riversidetaichi.com slash joint balance formula. All right, and with that being said, back to uh, ask to unmute. I think I muted my brother. Billy, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay, okay, I thought you was muted. So what's going on, brother man? Listen, man, uh, the um, Our Magi Nation mm -hmm. Conference was a huge success. Billy, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, okay, okay, I thought oh, you was wait, muted. Hold up. Yeah, I'm so what's going on, on, brother man? All right, Billy, you there, right? Yeah, I'm here, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. yeah, the I Imagine Our Nation was a huge success. Shout out to everybody that's still in the WhatsApp group. Uh, you got a, a breath uh, class that you're doing this weekend, right? Hold on. Yeah, we're going to do a breath a, a breath class. This is going to be amazing. Now, I just took the breath class myself for the very first time. I had never taken one. I had always wanted to take one before. I took it myself just uh, a few days ago, and it was totally amazing. Like, when I tell you this was a life-changing experience for me, it was a life-changing experience. I was able to do the deep breath that I had always basically thought I was doing, but they took me to another level. Mm. It took me so deep into a meditation, into a guided and controlled meditation that allowed me to really tap into, tap into some things in my limbic system and let the limbic system take over. And man, it really cleansed me out some internal issues and some things that I was fighting that didn't even realize I was fighting. It just, it was just an amazing thing. So uh, I talked to them about, you know, providing this uh, to the group and to, to people, you know, that follow my accounts. And they were like, you know what, it's just the time this, this right now in the area that we're in, in the situation we're in with all the, the strife and the struggling and the hurt that's going on and the pain that's going on right now, they agreed to do it, man. So um, we're going to do it Sunday evening. I think it's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern, but I will get that confirmed tomorrow morning. And then I'll put up some type of a website to let them know where the link will be for that. But it'll be a totally free, uh, you know, breath class, breath work. And the breath work is going to take you deep, deep, deep. And it's a, basically going to be one hour of breathing techniques with a guided meditation included. 
that's going to take you to another level consciously. Man, shout out to everybody that supported that I Mad John Nation um, group chat. Y'all going to enjoy that. I know I'm going to enjoy that. So we're going to be in there this Sunday evening. I yeah. think um, it's going to end soon, too, in family. So I appreciate everybody who joined. If you got questions, um, email me. But we're going to get to some of your questions today with my brother, uh, Billy Carson. I want to, um, Billy, you got this uh, 4B2. Tell the yeah. people about that real quick, please. Oh, it's amazing, man. 4B tube. Uh, it is a it's a, a YouTube-like platform. In other words, it's very similar to YouTube. Uh, and what it is, it's a video platform that allows you to become a content creator, upload videos, you can stream live, uh, and then you can also monetize your lives. So, like we're on a live right now. You know, if this was a special live and uh, or a special live event that you wanted to monetize. There could be a donation or a $1 fee or whatever the number is to help you compensate you for the work and effort and time you're putting in, taking away from your family, as well as the equipment you need to buy and keep everything up to date. Um, you know, because obviously some people may not realize that being a content creator costs money. <laughs> uh, it's not free. It doesn't it, We don't just do this and, you know, it doesn't cost us any money. Need, even if it's some, in some cases, that not costing us at that moment, it's an exchange of energy. Uh, so you'll be able to monetize. You can monetize videos and commercials directly on your own video platform account that you have. And it's free to have an account on 4BTube. So it's the number four, the letter B, then T-U-B-E, 4BTube.com. And it's just in the beta stages right now. We got about 200 people that have actually registered. It doesn't cost any money. And uh, I'm just letting people register and upload videos and content. There's probably a hundred or so videos up there already. Uh, some great content being put up, great meditation and manifestation and cooking and exercise, just a lot of great stuff. I'm really like well pleased with it so far and I'm looking forward to taking this to the next level. So the next step is to launch the mobile app versions of this, which will be probably next week or at the end of this week, they'll be submitted and they'll go live next week for Apple's and Android devices. Uh, and then what will happen from there is uh, it'll just go to the next level. I also have a new tweak, uh, another, a new, I uh, guess you call it a um, program hack being put in where you can take your YouTube uh, channel code and you can import it into the 4btube.com. And then 4btube will automatically take your YouTube content and import it directly to your 4btube channel without you having to do anything. So it saves you a lot of time and effort. So as you're building your YouTube channel, you're backing everything up on 4B2 automatically, just in case YouTube decides to, you know, they say maybe they don't want your content anymore and maybe they feel like they're going in a different direction, whatever the case may be business-wise, you just never know. People, companies change their minds on certain things and topics at times, but there'll be a, an exact copy and backup on 4B2 and um, uh, you won't have to worry about it being, uh, you know, demonetized or taken down. So it's just something, you know, to consider. That's powerful, man. Yeah, I definitely look forward to backing up uh, my channel here on there because, mm -hmm. you know, with the way they're censoring everything and I done been through a lot of BS with YouTube in the past. So yeah. Yeah, I definitely look forward to being a family member of 4B2, man. And just congratulations on the success and creating a competitor to YouTube. That's big. We've been asked for it and you got it, brother. I got it, man. I got it. And we just went live on Roku with uh, Forbidden TV, which is pretty cool. And two of my shows are up on Amazon Prime Video. It's um, Gratitude. Uh, and so the Gratitude episodes or the Gratitude series is now started on Amazon Prime Video. So if you have Amazon Prime Video app on your cell phone or on your TV, uh, Roku, whatever other device you may have, Amazon Prime Video, you can, uh, you can watch um, uh, Gratitude uh, on there. So episode one is up right now. I think episode two goes live in a few days. I want to get to a question real quick, my brother. This is from uh, the people at in WhatsApp. Um, Energetic Seven it, uh, wants to know what part does phosphorus play in transformation of light to matter? Okay, so phosphorus. I'll tell you right now. Let me pull up this notepad that I have here with that information in it. And that's actually a good question. Light can be converted into matter. Um, this is something that basically uh, I talk about in some of my workshops and lectures, the fact that um, 
light, they just recently learned how to convert light into matter. So let me touch on that real quick first. Um, so scientists discovered how to turn light into matter uh, after trying to do this for like over 80 years. And in my opinion, they've been trying to do it for even much longer than that uh, mm -hmm. because it's been talked about in ancient tablets and both talks about it in the Emerald Tablets. I, I've talked about it in my book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Now, basically at the Imperial College in London, physicists discovered that they can create light from matter. And what happened was they were going off of an old um, theory by this, this group of scientists uh, named Bright and Wheeler, and they suggested it could be possible to turn light into matter by smashing only two particles of light or photons together. And that will create an electron and a positron. Mm -hmm. And when you combine those two things together, an electron and a positron, that's literally the simplest form or method you can use to turn light into actual physical matter. Now, something that Thoth talks about adding to that process, he talks about using photonic light and electromagnetic frequencies uh, and combining that with cymatic frequencies. Mm -hmm. And he literally would manifest things into reality. And so, but it wasn't magic, it was real quantum physics. So he literally would utilize, uh, 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 I guess he must have had, in my opinion, the type of technology that could smash particles together. Now, the particle accelerator we have in Switzerland, it's called the um, CERN, uh, the Large Hadron Collider is the actual name and we call it CERN for short. It's the largest machine in the world. It's about four miles, this one machine. It's in a gigantic loop. And so what they do is they shoot a photon or a particle from one side and then another one from the other side. They meet in the middle. And when they meet, they're moving at the speed of light and they smash into each other. Mm. And by doing that, they create these um, quarks and quibits and all these other different um, tiny particles of matter. Uh, smaller than atoms. And what happens is they realize they can create microscopic black holes. They can uh, create other forms of matter, other forms of rare exotic matter. Uh, so all these things from, from this machine are being talked about in the Emerald Tablets 36,000 years ago. So what we're doing now is we're just simply rediscovering what already existed. Now with phosphor, phosphor is a chemical element. Uh, if you look on the atomic... Uh, you know, the uh, periodic chart of elements, you're gonna find this um, uh, number 15. And phosphor exists in a lot of different forms. It's, uh, it's highly reactive. Now, this element, phosphorus, is something that the alchemists used to try to use and still try to use, uh, you know, when, when alchemists are combining different elements together to try to create, turn, turn them into something else. One of the things that phosphorus uh, had been used before along with mercury was to try to create gold. Um, so trying to convert those two elements alchemically into other elements, other heavier elements, like one would be gold. With light, it had been experimented on by a couple of alchemists, but nobody had ever completed or successfully achieved it. Um, now, these scientists now in physics.org, which just achieved this through uh, smashing part, uh, sm you know, using a particle smasher to smash particles together at the speed of light. I think right now that might be, I would hate to say the simplest way, but it's one way that we know will work for sure, instead of guessing and trying to experiment. Uh, now, Thoth, he must have had either a particle accelerator. <laughs> now, our particle accelerator is four miles. Maybe back then they were so advanced, he didn't have to have a machine that big. It could have been something. Uh, maybe the size of, uh, you know, um, a small building uh, or maybe the size of a small SUV. We just don't know. But obviously he had the technology because he talked about the fact that he would literally manifest the stones. So some of these stones were not quarried. Some were, but some weren't. Some stones used in specific pyramids were manifested into existence. And this is why the people say, oh, the quarrying sites must have been 800 miles away. No, they manifested these, uh, these bricks right here in this spot, you know. Mm, wow. Uh, let's get to another question. Um, I got to find a way to. All right, somebody wants to know, can you mention Well, they, they say, can you mention the names that you say when you get stuck? Uh, I guess in the book they're talking about, can you explain a little more about the frequencies they yeah. represent and the origin of them? Mm -hmm, exactly. 
So what they're talking about is um, the terms that's used in my book on page 118, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Thoth talks about the fact that we're going to be going against the Dark Brothers. And we see that right now on this planet. The Dark Brothers are one element of one of the things he says you need to use this, uh, these techniques. And the other elements that you need to use is when things are just not going your way, or you may be even feeling anxious, anxiety, you're having uh, situations that you're trying to fix and you're not able, you're trying to figure out logically, how can I fix these solutions in my life? Whether it be financial, whether it be personal, whether it be, you know, whatever it is, how can I get out of this situation? How can I turn it to my favor? Uh, the Dark Brothers seem to be the, the biggest factor why a lot of these things take place behind the scenes. And the Dark Brothers are these entities that go around and create chaos. The ancient Egyptians in the land of Kem, they knew all about these Dark Brothers. Uh, and in the Temple of Hathor, you know, the Hathors, uh, they, were, they had the elementals. If you go into the ancient uh, comedic information and these elementals, they were multidimensional beings that had the capability of moving and shifting uh, to different frequencies. So in and out of this dimension, and they would guide uh, civilizations in a way that they saw fit for their own personal agendas, whatever those may be. Uh, but they, um, I think the, one of the greatest renditions of the elementals may have been in that Mars movie. Um, I forget the movie, it was uh, the name of the movie, but it was a movie where, uh, where a guy, uh, he found a portal uh, to get from Earth to Mars. Uh, by accident, trying to run from some uh, uh, some um, some cowboys, and it was a Wild West scene. I can't remember the name of this, but he ends up on Mars, uh, and there's elementals there at that time, and those elementals are trying to control, trying to control humanity on Mars and direct them in the path that they want for their own agenda, including creating wars and turmoil and grief and strife and everything else. So he knows about these dark brothers, and he says that they're everywhere in the entire universe not just here on earth. Uh, and he says that um, you're supposed to utter these names. Now, these names are not the names of real people, though as you read deeper into what he's talking about, you discover that these names are actually cymatic frequencies. And cymatic frequencies are, are frequencies that are audible to the human ear, uh, and some aren't audible. So there's, there's a range of them all the way to, uh, you know, like for example, elephants use frequencies to communicate over four to five miles distance using frequencies that are so low, the human ear can't even detect them. So they're having conversations from miles and miles away. We don't even know they, that they're doing that. And then also into the range of our hearing. But the, um, the frequencies are Utanus, Quertus, Chaital, Goyana, Wertal, Samveda, Ardal. And you're supposed to say these over and over again. So I'll say it again. It's Untanas, Quertas, Chaital, Goyana, Wertal, Samveda, Ardal. And I say in the book, these are not the names of real people. They are frequencies that when spoken aloud, send out a specific vibrational frequency that have a direct effect on our brain, which in turn has an effect on our personal reality tunnel. Self instructs that you are to use this technique as needed, meaning that there is not a permanent long lasting effect, but that the effect may be temporary and may, be, and may need to be repeated as needed. Those influenced later by Thoth, uh, no less than Pythagoras and Newton, discovered how to acquiesce the power of vibrational knowledge. So that's in the compendium of the Emerald Tablets book. You can get it on my website, forbiddenknowledge.com, or you can get it on amazon.com as well. It's still a bestseller. It's a bestseller now for over 16 months, even through the COVID-19 state is a bestseller. And the reason why is because this information is backed by real science. Amazing, amazing, my brother. Um, I hope y'all um, got those names. If you have to rewind, rewind, but I hope all of y'all definitely uh, took mention to those names. Billy, I got a book here and I want to show the people, I'm going to actually ask you a question um, from this book I've been reading recently. I showed it before on the show, actually. Yeah. In my field. Uh, something they say, I want, to, I want to ask you about something that they talked about. Um, they talk about ancient Taoists. Taoists said that the human body has an inner source of light that is generated within a place they call the upper Tantian or crystal place. Mm -hmm. Palace or Crystal Palace, and this palace can be found something they call the Hun Hun 
This translates as the mysterious gate and through this portal floods huge amounts of inner light. So since you mentioned portal and we're talking about light, talk to me about this inner light that they're talking about in the uh, Tan Tian or Crystal Palace. Yeah, they're talking about something that I mentioned as well. It's, um, they're talking about what even the, key, the Qigong masters talk about and how to access and harness the energy inside the human body. Uh, so one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that the human body is extremely, extremely powerful and harnesses a lot of energy and power. And um, if you go back to the Matrix movies and you look at, I think it's in the first Matrix uh, movie. Um, uh, yeah, it's got to be the first one because Neo is getting, he's waking up inside that artificial womb and he's trying to pull these tubes out of his head and everything else and he's looking around. And he's completely stunned because he realizes that he just woke up. But at the moment that he woke up, he sees that there are literally millions and millions of people that appear to be in these artificial wombs uh, plugged into this machine. And so when you first look at the movie, uh, you know, as a sci-fi movie, you're thinking, oh, wow, you know, okay, why would machines even plug a human body into uh, a system that allows us to them to draw power off of us because... I mean, a human body, I mean, well, how much power do we really have? And a lot of people don't really understand, like the human body is, harnesses magnificent amount of energy. So scientists literally, um, you know, did a study on the human body and how much energy it holds. And they found out that we have, okay, 37.5 trillion cells and each cell generates 0 0.07 volts of electricity. So at 37.5 trillion, that's 2.63 trillion volts of electricity in one human body. So one human body has 2.63 trillion volts of electricity inside of it. And so these ancient masters, these transcendent masters and adept initiates, they have learned the power, the Taoists, how to access and harness that internal light, the internal power source, right? By, by taking it off the cell wall channeling it up the chakra system and then using it as a, uh, a uh, in their body, in their hands, in their extremities, like in their hands for Reiki healing. This is where the power from Reiki healing, where Yeshua from the modern day Bible, when he went to uh, Tibet to learn Reiki healing, he was learning how to harness this Qigong energy, how to harness this light energy inside the body to heal with the hands. Uh, people have used this energy to do all kinds of things, manipulate reality, uh, manifest reality, uh, also to be able to um, uh, do telekinesis, move things with the mind and everything else. A lot of it has to do with harnessing the energy that's inside the body. And the energy is inside of each individual cell. And there are ways that you can, you know, they, they learn how there's ways to channel that energy, some of it, not all of it, because you, you, your avatar body would die, but how to channel it. So it's such a massive amount. They learn how to channel it. They can create portals with it. They can open up gateways with it. When you become a real master at this, you can do Reiki healing, you can do Qigong. All these different techniques have to do with this uh, amazing 2.63 trillion volts of electricity that's inside the human body right now. Yeah, um, that's you actually helped me out a lot with that, um, that presentation. That was actually, um, you talked about that in the, um, the I Imagine Nation workshop. Yeah. about all the voltage of electricity inside of us, man. And your presentation and your, your, that, that section right there helped me out a lot with some things, man. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're reiterating that, my yeah. brother. Let's get to another question. This is from the WhatsApp group that we got going on, family. For those who joined the uh, conference with myself and uh, Billy Carson, the I Imagine Nation uh, workshop. Um, yeah, they really participated hard. There were so many questions in there. I couldn't get to them all. I got to as many as I can get to. But with so many people talking with each other, there were a couple that I probably didn't miss. So I'm glad you're doing this because this is helping me find some of them, which is great, you know? I, I want to get to some of the um, questions on light. Uh, people are, we have to do a, um, a video just for them, probably addressing some people still having problems with the vacation rewards. Okay. So uh, we could do a video, just me and you, and and send them a link. Yeah. So you can show them exactly how to do it. 
Yeah, that's great. That's a great idea. That will clear it up very easily. Yeah, and it's only a very small amount of people. For some reason, I think it has something to do with the email address, and maybe they registered more than once with that same link. But we can either fix it by having them get a new email, or we'll just do it both. We'll make a video. That's great, instructional video, and send that out to everybody. That'll be fantastic. I had to um, take the email that you had on the on the on the website, whatever email was on there, and I had to add it to my Google address book so okay. that it wouldn't get sent to spam. So I know I, it is a little it's a little tricky. So uh, yeah, I think once you do that, it'll definitely clear everything up. Let me ask you this question from Ayavra. Ayavra mm -hmm. wants to know: Can you talk about the angles that need to be avoided, as mentioned in the Emerald Tablets? Okay, so now that's a great question. So physicists have figured out that there are at least 11 dimensions that make up our universe. So just within our one universe, and there's multiverses, but just within our one universe that we're in right now, the third dimension is just one of the, of the 11 dimensions. You have the first dimension, which is a single line. You have the second dimension, which is interconnecting lines. You have the third dimensions, which are interconnecting lines, and then the ability to have an X, Y, Z axis, so you, you can move up, down, left, right, side to side, so forth and so on. And then above that, you have the tesseract, which is the fourth dimension. And then above that, you fifth, sixth, all the way up to 11. Now, the thing about these dimensions uh, right now as being in the third dimension, you can move your arms around, you can look left and right. You don't realize that like one Planck unit above you know, this layer that we're in, there's another dimension. And then stacked on top of that, there's another one. And stacked on top of that, there's another one until you get to 11. Dimensions aren't far away. Dimensions aren't like, oh, there's a dimension a uh, hundred million light years away, you know, how do I get to it? Dimensions are literally stacked right on top of each other, basically even just, you know, just slightly touching. And to tune into these dimensions requires uh, frequency change. So the third dimension in this plane of existence that we inhabit right now is a, it it's tuned to a specific subatomic frequency. Now, any being that matches the frequency of this third dimension will appear here. If you don't match the frequency of this subatomic frequency of this dimension, you will not manifest as a, uh, as a physical being or a physical object or a molecule or even an atom inside this third dimension of this particular universe. Now with the angles, there are uh, every single dimension we've discovered now in science is stacked in a 90 degree angle to get to them above one another. So to get to the next dimension, you've got to move in 90 degree angles to get to the next dimension. Wow. Why is that? It's very strange and hard to understand, but we discovered that just through quantum experiments that this is the case, that dimensions are stacked and the only way to move up and over into one is through a 90 degree angle. Crazy because those talk about that in the Emerald Tablets. I mean, so when people start trying to tell me about, you know, the Emerald Tablets is just, you know, somebody's a whole bunch of hoopla that's made up. And how come, how come modern day physics from physics.org and all these other places are just now catching up to what's in it? I don't think they knew this back in the 1800s, all this quantum mechanics and quantum fit, not to the level that we're at right now. I think we're, you know, uh, we're on the rediscovery process and we're finding out. And I really do believe that a lot of these scientists are into all this alchemy and ancient text. And that's where they're coming up with all the new theories and proving that they're real. Uh, behind the scenes, and they won't bring that to the mainstream. Oh, I got this from the animal tablets, or I got this from, uh, you know, the, the Bhagavad Gita, but they're getting the information from these ancient texts, and they're turn, turning them into experiments. Now, Thoth is talking about the fact that some of these dimensions are not for us. They're not for us. Once you become um, an ascended master, or if you can get to the level consciously where you can transcend dimensions through, through conscious thought, because mind is outside of space and outside of time. And this goes into things like remote viewing, uh, astral projection. You can move up into these dimensions, but you may not necessarily want to move into certain dimensions because they are not for us. Uh, some dimensions we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to handle. Some you can get trapped and you may not find your way back. Uh, so there are these dimensions that uh, are for us and some that may not be the best thing for us and uh, 
you know, you can move into a dimension or to an area where you may not be able to make it back. So it's, uh, and, and also you got to realize in the different dimensions, physics and, and, and uh, the law of physics and everything operates in ways that we may not completely understand. It can be very confusing. And even in some cases, it could be scary. In some places, it could be complete bliss. Uh, for example, right now, we, we can only see in the third dimension, human beings can only see 1% of the visible light spectrum. So if we can only see 1% of the, of the visible light spectrum, imagine what the other 99% of the light wave frequencies are doing and what we're missing, what we can't see right now happening right in front of our faces, right in our living rooms, right in our bedrooms. We would be completely horrified, some of us, at what we see and what we witness and who we see moving around us and everything else because there's things going on right now, right in front of you as you sit there and watch this video that you can't detect because you can't see the light wave frequency. We can only see red, blue, and green primarily. The colors of the rainbow, which are split, split into fractals. Uh, however, you know, certain birds can see in ultraviolet, insects can see in ultraviolet. Uh, you have gamma rays, you have x-rays, you have uh, you know, all these different light wave frequencies, multi-spectrum frequencies that we're not tapping into and seeing, and there's a reason why. It would cause so much of, this, of a distraction, number one, uh, we wouldn't be able to focus. Number two, it literally might uh, freak a lot of people out. So we've been given a limited light spectrum of what we can physically see. So imagine moving up into a dimension and gaining access to all that's there in that dimension as you move up in and you can't find your way back or some of the things there aren't really like Thoth talks about aren't for us. There are some dark dimensions and dark dimensions are touched on kind of, an kind of like an enlightenment through entertainment in Doctor Strange. They talk about accessing the dark dimension and they got this from all the ancient texts, you know, and, and it, but the dark dimension, uh, it has the power to consume and it can consume your spirit, can consume your light energy and when you tap into it, it literally wants to siphon some of that life energy out of you if you don't know how to use it the right way. So that was kind of an enlightenment through entertainment thing, but it's real, it's real, it's totally real. And dimensions are 90 degree angles stacked directly on top of each other, making up 11 total dimensions that create our entire universe. So that was a great question. Indeed, indeed. I'm glad uh, the brother asked that and you touched on that. Uh, let me get back here. I need to find a way just to keep this up. All right, um, Billy Carson, do you know, this is from Venus uh, Energia. I hope I didn't mess up your last name. Do you know a group of star beings by the name of Archon? And what do you think of the soul language, AKA light language? Great question. The Archon, uh, there are beings named Archons. We, we named them Archons or human beings named Archons. The Archons are from the, um, the Nag Hammadi scripts. Okay, I have a copy of them in here somewhere. I got so many books around here. I wonder if I have it out right now. The Nag Hammadis, uh, I might be inside my bookcase and I would have to get up. But anyway, the Nag Hammadi, let me just check one more place here. Uh, that's not it, that's stage of time. So the Nag Hammadi is a, our scripts. You can buy the Nag Hammadi. Um, you can even buy them on Amazon. And so these Gnostic Christians uh, wrote the Nag Hammadis uh, these papers, parchment papers and so forth. And then they were later discovered in pottery and caves and put together into a book, but they would hide and, and they would um, study and read these scripts and they would, uh, I guess, teach their own theories about what they believe what's going on with the Bible and Christianity and everything else. And they believe that there are two beings that exist that are not human. One looks like a, like a walking embryo, kind of sounds like a gray alien. And the other with the big head and everything and the big eyes, they describe it. The other one looks like a reptile. So we're talking about the reptilians. So you have the grays and the reptilians, the two most talked about alien species right now in modern times. Um, so they name these things archons. The reptilian and the, uh, and the uh, gray, they have the capability of going multidimensional. And in some particular cases, for example, the way it's explained in uh, Kamadi scripts is that these um, reptilian aliens, they're not from Earth, that's why I'm saying the word alien. They have the capability of attaching themselves to your, um, your chakra system without you even being completely aware of it. 
and kind of harnessing your energy and drawing off your energy. Another thing that they do too is they both, according to the Nag Hammadi, have the capability of creating turmoil in the world. And this turmoil creates a low frequency vibration, kind of like what you see going on right now with all this, with all this uh, police brutality, uh, with the racist people out there that are attacking people and, and, and that are ca causing all this hurt and pain out there, uh, and all these wars, wars for money, uh, you know, war against drugs and all this stuff that cause all this turmoil, hurt, turmoil, hurt, hurt, pain, anger, anguish. They thrive off of that because these, uh, these archons, according to the Nag Hammadi, the way that they eat and get their sustenance is from your energy, by energy fields. They literally, like we eat food for sustenance, they eat energy fields for sustenance. And it has to be a specific energy field to feed them. So it's the frequency of a low vibration of pain, hurt, anguish, turmoil, sorrow, fear, all that creates a frequency that they actually ingest as, mm. as manna. Uh, so those are the archons. And, and the interesting thing about the uh, Nag Hammadi and the Gnostic Christians is that they truly did believe the same thing that I believed for a very long time. And I got confirmation when I studied the Nag Hammadi, confirmation that was so clear to me that when you're studying the, the people that are following Christianity, you know, what we call the modern day Christianity, uh, are most likely following the devil themselves, the same devil that they're running from. Dark Brothers that Thoth talks about in the Animal Tablets. In other words, um, the the um, this Satan guy, this uh, you know the devil. When you find out and you research who this entity was, you find out that this this entity was the right hand of God, was the most intelligent of out of all the angels. wasn't actually not even wasn't even an angel. wasn't was a cherubim. Uh, had the IQ of almost God itself. He can create things everywhere he went. Music followed him. It was the most beautiful of all of the angels and beings that were ever created, in, in, you know, from from the uh, main source. And the IQ was so high. So I was talking to a Christian gentleman who was telling me, you know, about Christianity. He didn't. He was trying to convert me. And I said, so you're telling me that this entity is this incredible, that this and this intelligent and this powerful? He said, yes. I said, well, um, do you think that it's realistic that an entity like that is going to follow this one book down to the letter to its own demise just because you have faith in the information in this, in this one book? I said, isn't it most likely that the entity that you're running from orchestrated this text in a way that guided you towards him or it, whatever it is, draining and siphoning your energy out of you to see you run into your own demise. Because an entity that intelligent would not allow, would not follow a book written by man. Hmm. And his eyes kind of lit up. <laughs> so that's the Gnostic belief. And I got confirmation re reading the Nag Hammadi scripts. And I truly do believe that inadvertently, not that they're trying to do this, but inadvertently that uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of religions are are following the same demonic path that they're trying to run from. Just my personal opinion. Uh, quick question, another one from Energetic Seven. Is the is the is there a cymatic machine you could recommend to translate our voice or words into cymatic patterns? That's another great question. Um, man, this is wow, it's a great question because it's something I was talking to somebody about two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> create a, a device that allow people to do cymatic frequencies at home without it, without them having to spend all this money on speakers and plates and all this other kind of stuff. So far, we haven't come up with a solid thing yet that we can say, this is what you do. But we've been theorizing on what we can provide, what we can create for the people. Um, one of them is obviously, it's based off of a speaker and it is based off of uh, this, uh, a flat sheet and one is a bowl. And one, you can put sand on, very fine, dry sand. And the other one would be a liquid that you didn't put sand particles in. Uh, so we're working on that right now. Um, I, don't, I haven't found one in particular that I could say, look, get this thing, other than some of the ones that scientists use. And people, you can make them at home as well. We're just trying to find something that's not so DIY, do it yourself, where it's something that's already put together. You can just open up a box, plug this in, plug that in, and then you know, make it happen versus actually having to kind of almost be a mechanic in a way and put all the stuff together. So we're working on that right now. I think it'll be a cool thing to have. And I think it'll be a great thing for kids to even utilize at home, children then, and make it part of their science experiments at school and everything else. 
So we are working on, uh, on, on doing something. And it's also going to have another plug-in because plants emit a frequency that's audible and, and even creates this musical note sound. So we're now trying to figure out how we can, we can also create an adapter for plants, house plants that you can connect to house plants and you can also see the frequencies coming from the plants and how they communicate as well. That was a great question. Yeah, it's funny that that must be very important. Um, I've been thinking about that for some time because I do music and I and I always wondered like, damn, if if I could get the cymatics behind this song I just produced, I wonder what sacred geometrical pattern would come up. Yeah. So yeah, the technology when they come up with technology that touches on all of that, mm -hmm. it's gonna be awesome. Let me get to another question uh, real quick. This is from Sal in NY. Once again, family. I'm reading questions from, let me just put it on the screen. I'm reading questions from uh, the I Magi Nation group chat. Me and Billy did a workshop on May 23rd and we promised the people that I will create a spiritual group chat so that they can stay on a high frequency together and Billy can ask some questions when he got time and they could just build it and, and chop it up with each other. And that's what we're doing. So they're just in the chat, they're talking, they're meeting, they're making, they're networking. Talking to Billy, it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Uh, Salon NY wants to know, everybody is searching for enlightenment. At what point do we actually know we are going in the right direction and gaining traction towards 5D? What happens spiritually, emotionally, and physically? Well, man, you have some great questions here. Um, and I, I answered so many great questions in that group chat. That group chat was powerful. One of the greatest things I've ever been a part of, by the way. So thank you, man. I appreciate you, Rich, for even coming up with the idea and saying, look, let's offer this group chat. Because some of the questions I had to answer in the group chat took me to a research on my, I had to go dig deep to myself, you know what I mean? And um, Excellent. yeah, you know, so it was great for me, even just like it was an eye-opening experience to go into some of this. Now, when you're going through uh, an awakening process and you're now trying to figure, sometimes you don't just say, I'm ready to wake up. It's something that gradually happens. And then you realize you're awake. And let me give you an example. When I was playing sports heavily, I stubbed my toe so bad. I had something called turf toe. Some of you athletes out there may know exactly what I'm talking about. Turf toe is something that is so freaking painful. And there's nothing worse than having a big toe that's jammed and injured and inflamed. Because obviously, if you're pivoting left, right, playing basketball or football, it's your main, it's your fundamental basis of your foundation for moving left, right, and jumping. And it, it hinders everything that you can do. So you want to perform at a high level and you're thinking about performing at a high level, but that injury, that lingering injury is slowing you down. This is, this is what I liken to, um, you know, being in the third dimension and not being fully awake and not really knowing what's going on. You're just kind of going through the motions. And every time you try to wake up every time information is presented to you that makes you start to think somebody comes and try to try to change your mind back or distract you and get you back on the path you was on so that you don't you know you don't wake all the way up and this toe injury would go up or down it would get a little bit better get worse a little bit better get because you can never fully stop exercising and training and there's no real you can't put a cast or anything like that so i went to the doctor again and the doctor said you know these are the exercise movements you're supposed to do flex for flexibility or your toe will get stuck you gotta do these toe movements and these flex movements with the toe. Uh, and, uh, you know, he gave me some inflammation uh, medicine to help start me off the process and do ice and everything else. And he said, one day, if you do these right, if you continue to do these flexible movements that I'm showing you, he said, one day, he said, I don't know when, but one day you're gonna wake up, you know, from your sleep and you're not gonna even realize the pain's gone and you're gonna go, wait a minute, there's no more pain. And so I said, okay, I kept doing the flex movements. I kept doing all the little adjustments and um, eating anti-inflammatory foods. And just like, like the doctor said, one day I literally woke up and got out of the bed and started walking. And at first I would wake up and I would be limping right away. I walk into the bathroom without even thinking about it. And I use the bathroom. I come out of the bathroom and I realize I'm not limping anymore. And the pain was gone. So if you want to liken that to uh, spiritual awakening, when you first get little tidbits of information that starts making you think and ask questions and question your reality uh, and question the mainstream, and then you then turn into researching information that you've, uh, you know, you've been enlightened to or, or pointed towards, 
now that already began your enlightenment process that just be you just started your process of becoming enlightened you just started the process of going into 5d consciousness not physicality but consciously because your conscious consciousness is multi-dimensional so now you're moving in that direction and your discernment begins to get stronger your ability to understand and see things from a higher plane of thought looking down on things you begin to analyze things in a much different way and over time as you continue to be the student the student then becomes the teacher and then the teacher eventually becomes the master and then one day without you even focusing or trying to say i'm trying to become an enlightened person i'm trying to become awakened you have been going through that process so long you then literally go from transform from student uh to teacher then to master over time at that level even though your physical body's in the third dimension you have you have 5d consciousness you are seeing things before they happen you're discerning things in almost real time you are able to make different moves and navigate yourself through this matrix reality that we're living to it in living in, in the third dimension in a way that makes you look almost magical nothing seems to affect you nothing seems to um uh be able to destroy your path and you have the capability of being a light to others a light a beacon of light that they can follow and a beacon of light that you can then share that light with others you can light their candle and that candle will be lit and guess what by lighting others candles your candle always stays lit. you never your your, your flame never dies out you know, one candle could light a hundred million a trillion a quadrillion mm -hmm. candles and that same first flame will still stay the exact same so you become this enlightened being you can become 5d consciousness through a process an arduous process of growth and development and seeking information to your like in your inner self and then eventually you just get to this point where you've already you've become awakened and uh it's not something that you see uh you could write track down every single day it's just this process that occurs as long as you keep practicing like the doctor told me keep working on these flex movements on the toe keep doing this keep doing that keep eating these anti-inflammatory foods and one day you're going to wake up and be like wow and that's exactly in my opinion the way that it happens indeed that was that was an amazing answer i, I know that helped the uh person that just asked that um, oh, just a quick comment. I have Rogers wrote in the WhatsApp group. It's been a wonderful chat. I really enjoyed the knowledge and love everyone has shown. It's been uplifting and a breath of fresh air to communicate with other souls interested in growing and becoming love. I definitely miss it. I appreciate, man. I appreciate all the support. Uh, me and me and the brother Billy's actually thinking about doing another workshop, yeah. maybe in um. August, September, mm -hmm. around, you know, around September or something like that. So, you know, for those that are interested, start hitting me up. It's going to be another powerful one. We'll probably do, we'll most likely do the, the, the group chat again, since it uh, turns out to be so, so successful and so many people benefit from it mm -hmm. tremendously. So, uh, yeah, I'll just keep you guys updated. But if you're interested, let me know ahead of time so I can put you on a special list on our up and coming workshop. Um, Another one, Billy, I, the brother, Energetic7. Uh, let, let me get to somebody else, Energetic. Uh, you got some great questions. Let me. Uh, Andre wants to know, uh, Billy Carson, I've been looking into tapping into the energy of ley lines. Do you know what type of things I could try to utilize ley line energy for? Oh, yeah. I think I answered that question in the group chat as well. Um, ley lines are these energetic lines that exist all around the earth. And there are energy grids or energy energy centers on Earth that create a grid around the planet. What's interesting with the ley lines is when you analyze the location of these ley lines, and this is done through regular science, by the way. So what he's talking about is not like any kind of mystical thing. It's actually a real thing that exists. And uh, when you look at it, uh, the grid lines of the energetic centers of these nodes on the planet, it, it creates a fractal pattern something we can recognize from the Mandelbrot set of fractals, fractal holography, fractal, uh, you know, frac fractalization in your know, lungs compared to your lungs look like roots of a tree. You know, the iris of the eye looks like a nebula. As, as above, so below. You, you begin to see how it create, how reality is literally created and how this planet is manifested as well. Um, now these ley lines, the ancients would tap into the energy of these ley lines. They knew where the ley lines were located because they had the science and technology to do so. Most likely some type of a satellite orbiting the planet that could pick up these energy centers. 
uh, which wouldn't be too difficult to do because all you have to have is a, uh, is a satellite that had the capability of um, orbiting the planet in a polar orbit. So if you're orbiting in a polar orbit as the planet rotates on its axis, it's scanning every single swath of the planet as it rotates. And then it can have a sensor on there that would literally detect energy fields or magnetic fields. And then based off of that, where the magnetic fields whip out of the planet Earth to create this protection that we have around us to, to stop radiation and cosmic, uh, cosmic rays from damaging our DNA so we can actually exist on the surface, uh, you can create a map of the energetic grids. And then, so what they would do in the ancient times is they would build these megalithic structures directly on top of our energy grid. So they would use these uh, granite uh, stones that were crystal granite and they would use other specific types of stones that, uh, that resonated well with different energy fields. And they would then build massive temples, massive pyramids on, tops, on, on top of these, um, these en energy nodes and harness it to utilize it in the structure, construction of the actual building itself. They would then turn some of those buildings that were built on top of the energy grids into healing centers. For example, the Temple of Dendera in um, Egypt. That was an amazing trip. I went to uh, the Temple of Dendera in Egypt. I was driving with my guides through the desert for about three hours in the middle of nowhere. I'm thinking, as I'm looking around, I'm going, man, this car better not break down. It, we are out here. Uh, and what was crazy was on the way to the Temple of Dendera, I look out to the right, and I see this structure, this building, like way off in the distance. I mean, way out there. And I'm looking, I'm like, what is that? This building was so big from the distance I was from it, it had to at least be three football fields. And it had this giant NASA logo on the side of the building. I mean, I said, what in the world is NASA doing in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere in Egypt? So I asked the driver and he said, oh, they're making aluminum for us. I said, they're making aluminum? I just started, I just, I don't think they're making aluminum, man. I, they're doing some experiments <laughs> or something out there. But we get to the Temple of Dendera and um, it's built on an energy ley line. Uh, and inside the Temple of Dendera, there are these gigantic granite plates in this walking area. And the plates, the magnetic crystal granite are stacked up from the floor to the, to the ceiling. And they, each one weighs about four tons each and they have finger lines in them. Imagine if you just took your fingers and put them in sand and did like that, you could see those lines in the sand. Well, so many people had come to this hallway, this healing hallway with this crystal granite built on top of this energy ley line. They would, if you were sick, you would come there and you'd put one hand of fingers on one wall, or other hand of fingers on the other wall, and you walk down this energy healing hallway. And so many people had done it for so many thousands of years that finger lines were carved into the granite. That's how many times, can you imagine how many times that had to be had been done for granite to dissolve and allow the mold of finger lines to be, you know, kind of etched into it. It must have been millions of people over, over thousands of years. Uh, but that they went there to get healed by, not by a magician, not by a doctor, but by energy. Uh, and energy is the healing technique that's going to be the technique of future of the future. Nikola Tesla knew about it and, said, and stated that already because why he was a he was an expert historian in ancient Egyptian technology. He knew that the future of healing would be frequency. That's one of his most famous quotes. Now to find these uh, energy ley lines ourselves, you just need to just research the science sites, science websites. They've already laid them out for us. Uh, there's a grid that I have that I use in some of my presentations that puts out the locations of these. So it takes a lot of the uh, effort out of trying to figure out where these things are located. A lot of the energy ley lines fall, flow across the 30, 33rd degree parallel on Earth. The 33rd degree masons know about this. And the 33rd degree masonry is really all about two things. Um, it's about locating the, the, the highest level of energy on the planet Earth itself. And that's the 33rd degree parallel. The second thing about being a 33rd degree mason is uh, space travel. So that's the real ultimate goal of it, harnessing the energy from these ley line sites and moving into space. Now, why space? Well, if you look into the ancient tablets, you discover that an advanced race of these beings were stranded here uh, in ancient times. And their main purpose and goal ever since that moment had been to get back to becoming a spacefaring race is that all the technology was stripped out of the pyramids and the temples 
and taken away from the planet and they were abandoned here with no ability. Imagine you travel to another planet and somebody takes away your spaceship and takes with all your tools and all your advanced technology. All you're left with is whatever's there already. You're gonna have to go through the same process of, um, uh, of, of becoming advanced again. In other words, right now I know how to use a cell phone. I'm an expert at this. I could turn this on, turn it off. I can make all kinds of things happen on it, install apps, take apps off. But if you knock down the cell phone tower around the corner and destroy all cell phone towers, uh, or if you take the microchip out of here and render it useless, I don't know how to make a microchip and I can't rebuild a cell phone tower. So because of that, it takes me, there's a, there's a rediscovery process and invention, you know, so all this takes place. Uh, and so it's really amazing. So they, they, they had been trying to do that. Now you have to travel 33 times the speed of sound in order to break Earth's gravity. This is what it's really all about. This is why the only way <coughs> in um, Florida or the only launch pad, I'm sorry, in Florida for uh, launching rockets into space and space shuttles is, is, run, is uh, launch pad number 33. You don't think they know this? There's only one launch pad, that's launch pad 33. It's all about, you have to travel 33 times the speed of sound in order to break the power and the force of the mass of Earth's gravity to get into an orbit. Uh, so that's what it's, what it's really all about. Now, use, utilizing it for yourself, that becomes a little bit more tricky, understanding how to harness the energy that will take a specific type of technology that is not readily available to us at this moment. Uh, the ancients would use a lot of crystal granite. Crystals obviously resonate well with these energy centers. So uh, it would have to be some type of crystal te crystal backed technology in order to harness the energy uh, from the grid. Uh, but there is no specific thing that I know of I'm not one of these people that just make stuff up. So if there's something specifically that I just don't know, I'll tell you all about the information and give you a lot of information about it. But in the end game for this particular thing to, for you to actually harness it, there's nothing that I know of at this particular moment other than something backed by crystals, being able to tap into those grids and harness them for energy and for healing purposes. That's something that we all should be spending time, energy and effort researching. Uh, because it is literally going to be the future of healing. Shout out, uh, definitely everybody also um, in the YouTube chat room. We're taking questions from the I Magi Nation WhatsApp group chat, but uh, the brothers and sisters in the YouTube chat, man, those some small. I'm reading some of the comments, man. Y'all, here we, there's, a, there's, there's some bright people are, are with us tonight, my brother Billy. Nice, beautiful, man. Right. Bright lights, bright lights, Billy. Bright lights. I love it, hey, man. Let me That's um, so let me ask you. I uh, some sometimes when I read these books, and um, I love to ask you a question from something I'm reading to help me understand it better. Yeah. Let me just read this. This is from a book. This is a real book, good book, fam. Let me just put this video on you. I had this off. I had this book for a while, family. It's called um, I lost the cover. It's called Mind Dimension. I don't even know if that website still works. It's www.ashoi.com. I actually okay. got this, I got this probably about 12 years ago. Wow. But a real good book, uh, The Parallel Realm, The Parallel Realm of Our Existence in a Real Dimension. Mm. Let me just um, read something to you real quick. Um, eyes don't see. Eyes in turn send neuroelectrical signals to the brain. Two important points need to be noted here. Firstly, the, receptor, the receptors or neurons in the eyes don't send the light that stimulated them to the brain. Rather, they, the neurons, send neuroelectrical signals that is generated by them in turn when light stimulates them. So the brain has no direct contact with either the real object outside the eyes or the real light that has entered the eyes. Yep. Secondly, what do the eyes say? Okay, well, I'm ending there. We know a lot of us, um, we're taught that the light that we see stimulates, you know, our eyes and then our brain decodes the light from the outside. Right. This is saying that we're getting light from the outside, but the brain is decoding the inner light. Right. So could you touch on that, my brother? That's very yeah, interesting. That's, that's a, I listen, I got to buy a copy of this book. I got to find a copy right. of this book, brother, because. Yo, it's deep. It's a deep book. That's on point. That's what I talk about all, this is amazing, man. I really got to get a copy of that. You got to send me that uh, that information on that book. Yeah, I'm gonna send you the link. I'm gonna send yeah, you the thank link. You. Thank you. So I'm gonna give you the analogy that I've used before. Some may have heard us, a lot of people probably haven't. The brain is encased in complete darkness, 
okay, inside of your skull. Complete and utter darkness. The brain has no clue what's going on on the outside. And I mean no clue. But the brain has friends. It has the eyes. It has the touch. It has smell. It has the ears, right? It has all your senses. So the brain says, hey, guys, you know, I want to know what's going on out there. Can you please go and collect me some data? So what happens is the friends, all the senses, in this particular case, we're talking about the eyes. The eyes, they go out. The hands, you know, touch goes out. Hearing goes out. Smell goes out. And then now these friends of the brain collect data from the outside realm. This what we call this ether, this third dimensional ether, this soup that we're living in. And it collects data. Now, in the case of the eyes, it collects photonic information. It hands is collecting electromagnetic information from what we call repulsion. You never really touch anything. Electrons, ele electromagnetic fields repel each other. And from that, you, de you detect the sense of touch, which is then transmitted to the brain as well, and hearing and everything else. So the friends go out, they collect data. They don't know what they're collecting. They have no clue. The eyes have no clue what, it's, what, what they've collected, what it, what it means. But they send this information to the brain in the form of a data transmission. So in this particular case, photon pings off of the screen from this computer or device that you're watching, this cell phone device or tablet. It then hits the retina inside the eye. That light of that photon, electromagnetic frequency hits the eye. What happens is the retina breaks down the exact specific frequency of that wave, the oscillation uh -huh. of that wave breaks it down into a mathematical binary code Ooh. and sends that binary code to the brain. Then the brain takes the binary code, not the light. The brain takes the code uh -huh. and it then converts that code into a, projects a hologram to say, this is what's going on out there. So you see nothing with the eyes. The brain decodes a specific oscillating frequency and projects a hologram. And we navigate through the third dimension based off of a projected hologram from collected zeros and ones, bits of data that our sensory perception system sent to the brain itself. Wow, man. I mean, this, if, if this ain't interesting, y'all, this is what it's all about right here, family. This is what it's all about, man. I'm probably going to get to one or two uh, more questions. I don't want to keep my brother on too long tonight. Um, but wow, man, I appreciate, like I said, everybody in the chat. Let's go back to, um, all right. So uh, Energetic 7, once again, from the what's, from the 30 day I Magi Nation workshop family wants to know how are the 22 light letters of Hebrew? Let me just put it on because it's better when people can see it. How are the 22 light letters of Hebrew connected to our DNA and the stars above, as above, so below? Mm -hmm. uh, the Hebrew alphabet has a lot of power, first of all. So should we learn Hebrew, Billy? Would you recommend that? I recommend it. You know, I've dabbled in Hebrew when I've gone through years ago when I was going through the Torah uh -huh. and taking Hebrew letters and, and words and phrases. You know, you have to write it. It, it writes opposite. It's, you know, it's left to right. It's not right to left. It's a complicated language in a lot of ways. And it takes it takes effort to learn it. This is why, you know, uh, a lot of the Jewish people send their kids to school to just learn specifically learn Hebrew outside mm. of their regular studies, you know. And the Hebrew alphabet is based off of a numeric system. So each letter has power. So each letter has a numeric value. And because of that numeric value, each letter also has a specific amount of power. And what you find out is that the further back you go in language, the more ancient the language, the more powerful the language. Meaning when I say power, the more, con the more it has control to manipulate the reality or your reality tunnel or collectively total realities. The, a lot of the ancients knew this. So when you go to Egypt, you'll find that you'll discover there were three levels of language in the ancient times. And so they had the language of light, okay? And the language of light was only spoken by the Anunnaki and the Pharaoh. So the Pharaoh and the Anunnaki, uh, they, had the, they had the information that they would share. They could communicate back and forth between the language of light. Uh, this is, these are the, hier the ancient hieroglyphs that a lot of people are just now learning this to, in this current era. Then underneath that, you had this language of the politicians. They had politicians back then. And if you don't believe it, just read the Sumerian tablets 
the Sumerian tablets talk about having a bicameral Congress over 6,000 years ago. So this is nothing out of the ordinary. This is something very, very well proven by a lot of the over 1 million tablets that have been left behind and made it through the test of time. This is what I wrote on tablets, stone tablets. Then, so you had the, you had the language of light, then you had the, um, you had the, um, the politic language where they had the capability of speaking this language to each other. The politicians couldn't speak the highest language, the language of light. They could speak the politician language, which included some glyphs and some, uh, some letters. And then you had underneath that, you had the, uh, the, the working class people. They just had standard, uh, st a standard language. Now we call it, in this part, particular monitor, we call it Arabic. So, but they weren't allowed to learn the politician level language and they of course weren't gonna learn the language of light as well. So these are the different levels that it was at. Now the people at the top of that pyramid, for example, the rulers, the elite, they had, they knew all three languages. And you had the, this is how you control, this is how you control trillions of people. You can control planets of people with this, you know, this setup. Right. Um, and so when you go into um, understanding how powerful this language of light is, you realize that it's so powerful and they knew this, that it allows you to, to manipulate because each word you vocalize is a somatic frequency. This is why the power is there. And those somatic frequencies have power over the ether of space time, over reality tunnels and everything else, even over manifesting not only things that you think about, but also manifesting physicality. So they, uh, they reserve that for themselves. In the Torah, it's the same story. Uh, uh, you know, as you learn the Hebrew and as you learn the power of it and the Kabbalah and everything else, you realize you're talking about utilizing and saying words in specific ways and specific frequencies to create realities and manifest things. Of course, the other underlying fundamental are these religious-based te teachings that really got away from in more modern times. That really got away from the true power of, of the language, which was was really about man manifesting and creating realities and directing their their um their chosen people in a in a specific way that they wanted them to go based off their agenda. When you analyze the Hebrew letters and you stack them in certain ways, you realize also that you can create the body of a man uh, from the Hebrew letters. It's just so much, it's, it's such a deep thing. I mean, it's really, um, it's one of those things that you can study literally for, you know, 15, 20 years. Uh, it, there's so many aspects of the Hebrew language and the power of each individual letter that has to do with harnessing energy, harnessing light, manipulating realities, creating realities, and it can be used for good and it can also be used for evil unfortunately. So that's the same with anything in the universe. Anything in the universe can be used it can be used for good or for evil. The light is the light. The, the truth is the truth. Understanding how to manipulate that for your own agenda becomes a skill and talent that a lot of people, unfortunately, on this planet have mastered. We call them now the oligarchs or the elite. So it's a, it's a very powerful thing. You know, the letters of light, man, um, it's powerful. I recommend everybody really just dabble into the Hebrew letters and the power of each letter and the number of each letter. And you'll begin to see, for example, on the monster uh, energy drink, the monster energy drink has these Hebrew, it looks like a claw, but when you look at it and you really analyze it, it's really the Hebrew letter. And this Hebrew letter has a numeric value and each that value is six. So it's three claw, three claw marks. And so it's 666. That is the, the number value assigned to this can of energy drink. So, I mean... They know how to manipulate realities and keep people entangled in specific things so that they can actually profit financially from it. Uh, you know, so it's a, it's powerful, man. It's some powerful stuff. I mean, I can go on about that stuff for hours, you know? Yeah. Wow. Um, somebody, where's this at? Where's this at? Um, JR from the WhatsApp group wants to know, uh, I know you talk about the silver. Oh, family, make sure y'all get your silver from uh, my brother Billy and use the coupon code BLACKMAGIC363. I know a lot of people ask, what is your diet? They're so impressed with your youthful appearance, my brother. JR wants to know, what are some alkaline foods you eat and uh, plant-based healthy food for a man who exercises? Okay, great question. Thanks for the compliments. I appreciate that. Um, some of y'all do know I have... Uh, 
five, five, I, I can't call them kids anymore because they're adults. My, my oldest son's 30. My daughter's 29. She's pregnant right now, having a, her first child. My oldest son already has two. Uh, his five-year-old uh, daughter and uh, four-year-old uh, son. So those are my two grandkids that are already here. And I have a third grandson being born literally any day now. Uh, and my other, my daughter who's 26, another son that's 24 and one that's 20. Uh, but uh, so I got five kids and three grandchildren basically. And I just got done playing some, some, some uh, very competitive basketball game uh, this weekend on Father's Day because we're really like a very competitive family. So we go out there and we go all, I don't hold back and they don't hold back. So it was a really good challenge. And uh, I posted some of the stuff on my Instagram story on Billy Carson official on Instagram, some of the, some of what we were doing out there. But uh, I just literally try to be active, number one. I think that by sitting still or slowing down too much, it affects your health because your circulatory system is not getting enough work. You're not getting enough car cardio. You're not getting the blood pumping through the body. You got to get the sweat to sweat out your toxins that are in your body. Uh, as most of y'all know, I don't eat meat. All right, so I, I practice a plant-based um, a plant-based uh, diet, and I've been doing that since I was a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, I was afraid to chew on the meat. I was afraid to eat it, um, and so my mother, you know, would give me side dishes. So I started out as a very small child eating whatever they gave me, as a toddler. Once we moved to Florida, I started learning more about animals and stuff, and I started get I started becoming afraid to swallow animals and I wouldn't want to touch them. So that's kind of how it happened. Later on, when I got into sports, we were so poor, I didn't have enough money to buy any food. So whatever the coach would give me, whatever the school would give me, I had no choice. I had to eat it. But after that ended, I went back to, I just drifted right back into not doing so. For the majority of my life, the average person is probably, I've probably consumed maybe one fifth of the amount of meat products or animal products that the average person has consumed. So I've consumed significantly less animal products than the average person. Right now, I do highly recommend a plant-based diet. I have an Instagram account on Facebook also. It's the same exact name, Plant-Based Alternatives. Plant-Based Alternatives on Instagram and also on Facebook. And every single day, we upload about four uh, plant-based meals with full recipes. And it's mixed, not just all starches. It's not just all grains. It's not just all salad. It's all, it's everything, including even phenomenal desserts. Uh, so you'll find on there some amazing meals that I love to eat, a great variety of meals that will give you everything you need uh, in terms of protein and vitamin Bs and vitamin D and everything else. Um, and I have so much... Uh, plant oil, or, or I guess I, I just call it plant oils in my skin that helps me from, you know, keeps me from getting wrinkled. Like right now, I'm very shiny. That shine that you see is not from the light. It's it's the oil that's in my skin. And this oil that's in my skin, it's always there. Even when it's cold outside. I went to MIT, which you have the shirt on. It's ironic I got the shirt on, uh, to do my final courses. This was a 2017, I think it was, or 18, I guess it was. But anyway, it was it was winter. The middle of winter and i went to um this airbnb and as i get there the, the lady that owned the house told her son to you know get take me over to the room i go over to the room and he's like you know you want me to get a fan or something you want me to turn the air on he thought i was hot because he thought it was a sweat <laughs> this is the oil that's coming out of my face non-stop i mean i could take this oil and i can literally use it like a lotion in it, but it's always there and i i attribute that to plant foods um, so the, everything that I eat is on that site. Another thing that I do, and I'm telling you, you will not regret this. Colloidal silver, monoatomic gold, um, and lemon. So I take, uh, every morning I take a cup, I get warm water, not hot water, because hot water kills the enzymes. Boiling hot water. You don't want to boil the water. You want to get the water warm. Okay. So you get warm water. It's good for your stomach. Warm distilled water. Uh, a cap of monoatomic gold, uh, a cap of uh, colloidal silver, a cap of monoatomic gold, and um, put it in there. And then I also add then a squeezed half a lemon, mix it around, add a little bit of aloe, and I drink that. And uh, so the combination of those things together, to me, has helped with all the inflammation, prevented inflammation, all the other things that everybody else have been suffering with, um, you know, I haven't really suffered with. Um, I've been very, very blessed and very fortunate 
And it just became a habit of mine doing this stuff for so many you know, decades. And I see now the long-term effect. It really, for me, it really paid off. I'm very healthy. I'm very active. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to be joining this 50 and over men's basketball league. Uh, as soon as this COVID-19 is over, um, oh, we'll be oh. this thing, you know, so I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to be like Michael Jordan out there, uh, literally. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to be competing in a, uh, a charity basketball event in January, as long as this COVID-19 thing dies away, which I'm, I'm commanding now in my mind that this thing will just, will, you know, it will trickle down and always be there underlying, but as long as it goes, but we can go back to some kind of quasi normal. Because I really want to compete in this this huge event out there in uh, at the Amway Center in uh, Orlando, Florida, in, in January. Uh, but so that's what I do. And I work out. Uh, now I don't work out to be a bodybuilder. I don't have no. I'm not trying to build gigantic biceps. I'm not trying to build these gigantic pecs and all that. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't. At my age, I don't want to have to try to maintain that because trying to maintain that requires me to eat a lot more food, and I don't eat a lot of food. That's another thing. I don't gorge myself. I don't eat until I feel like I'm totally full. And I do a lot of intermittent fasting. So if I eat something like the last meal I had today, I believe was around, I think it was before five, because by the time I got back to my house, it was already five. So it was before five. So my last meal, my last meal today was before 5 p.m. And I won't eat again until tomorrow, probably like around uh, maybe uh, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So that's like an inter intermittent fast right there. So I'm not putting a lot of heavy foods in my body and then laying down with all that food in my stomach and then forcing my body, instead of it detoxing all night, it's now forced to try to digest all night. Uh, so, you know, those little things, but you, you take that and multiply it over a lot of time, all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, my hair, my hair grows like wildfire. I get two haircuts a week. I'm, tomorrow I get a haircut. So I get a haircut on Tuesday. I get a haircut on Friday every single week, even through COVID, my barber will come to my house and cut my hair. There's pictures of me on Instagram stories, getting haircuts at the house. So, uh, and the reason why is because my, and my hair grows like this. It's just a testament to my diet. I really truly believe it's the, it's the diet that's doing this. My hair grows like wildfire. My beard grows, everything grows like wildfire. So, um, I think it's a plant-based diet, the monatomic gold, the colloidal silver, uh, with a, a half a lemon in warm water every single day for decades. And, uh, you know, hey, listen, it's outlined and I feel great. Family, before you crash this website, make sure you type in the uh, the, with the um, promo code. code. Yeah, Black Magic 363. Um, What's the website, uh, Billy? They could get this? You go to 4 bitted Knowledge with the number 4, 4BiddedKnowledge.com with the number 4, 4BiddedKnowledge.com. And uh, go to the online store link at the top of the website, and it'll take you to the online store. And uh, let me see if they just uh, got the restock. I can go to my app and see. I know we just got a huge shipment in uh, yesterday. Uh, everything should be up. We got 118 colloidal silvers in stock, 16 ounce. We got uh, the Starfire Gold in stock right now, 74 and left in stock. 16 of the uh, Starfire Gold by themselves. One Starfire Gold comes with a free bottle of colloidal silver. So you may want to take advantage of those before that runs out. Um, so yeah, we're, we're stocked up pretty good right now. Uh, but use the coupon code BLACKMAGIC363 at checkout. B-L-A-C-K-M-I-M-A-G-I-K. B-L-A-C-K-M-A-G-I-K 363 at the checkout. Uh, if you accidentally put a C instead of a K, don't worry. It still works because I've made both coupon codes because I'm thinking in advance and using discernment. You see, an intelligent person always solves a problem before it happens. Mm. Uh, so you, we're already set up for that. And um, don't forget to use that coupon code. You will get a discount off these prices and you can take advantage of, uh, of some free stuff along your shipment as well. Indeed. Um, let me get to one more question, my brother, then we can get out of here. Um, somebody in the chat actually wants to know, where is it at? Uh, Hakeem TV wants to know about, he says, do you know about semen retention? Now uh -huh. that's dealing with the Kundalini light or something like that or Chi energy. I don't know about the retention aspect. I do know that, um, when you, um, when you, in the right sexual condition, when you're, you know, harnessing your energy 
you can what they used to do in ancient times this is basically from this ancient text they would take the energy from the orgasm and they would recycle it back into the body they would hold on to an actual onk <laughs> this onk had a jet pillar built into it with a with a crystal a lumerian crystal and it was made of copper and at the moment of uh the orgasm the sexual energy would then be redirected back into the onk and then they can use the energy that they had let out and it literally would harness it back from the onk back into the body again so it was this weird cycle of harnessing harnessing sexual energy uh and the retention aspect of it to be quite honest with you i'm not sure about the retention i know that um like not having uh you know sustain or what do you call it uh not having sex and holding back it will create a um a much stronger orgasm which could be maybe what people are talking about you know in some cases utilizing energy from that but the ones that i know about from the ancient times or the ancient records if you go into the ancient comedic information about channeling the energy uh through the kundalini from sex back into an onk you'll find that information that's available even online uh so that's you know that's that's about as much as i know about it okay yeah for those asking about the what's the website the website is forbiddenknowledge.com that's the website the coupon the coupon code is blackmagic363 and the website once again the number four biddenknowledge.com lexi that is a good book tau of sexology uh, Lex Genesis wrote, if, if somebody wants to know about semen retention, that is a good book. I, ha I had that book a little while ago, so that is a good book. Listen, Billy, man, I mean, you got a lot going on, my brother, the 4B2. Um, you got the Unite the 99 app. Yep. Uh, shit, man. I ForbiddenKnowledgeTV.com for streaming. Yep. Wow. A lot of stuff going on. The Unite the 99 app is doubled every four days. Unite the 99, U-N-I-T-E, 99. You can search for that on your uh, App Store, Apple, or Android device. You can get it. It's a search engine. I mean, this is a, it's a social media platform, just like um, uh, Instagram and Facebook. It combines functionality of both. So you have clickable links like you have on Facebook. You can post videos. You can post images. Um, you can share content. Uh, if you, you can become a verified account, uh, you can go live. All these different functions are on there already, and people are really resonating with the with the app. There is no algorithm. This is why people want to get on my app for social media. There's no algorithm, so we're not going to suppress your post, suppress your content. The order that the post came in is the order that people who follow you will see it. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it started out. That's the way I feel it's, it should have always been, not some kind of artificial intelligent robot trying to guess who can see what next and manipulate the, the outcome so that you are forced to pay for marketing and so forth and so on. So the app is doing phenomenal, Unite the 99 uh, app. And Forbidden Knowledge TV just launched on Roku yesterday. We went live on Roku. So if you have the Roku device, you can search for streaming apps and you can look for Forbidden Knowledge TV. And we'll be on Apple TV, Amazon, uh, Fire Stick, and of course the uh, App Store for Android and, and Apple. Uh, in just a few more days. So you'll be able to pull it up on everything. So I'm pretty excited about that. A lot of great stuff going on in the 4B2. I'm really excited about that. In about two weeks, I'm going to make a huge press release about it and really expand it out and tell everybody, get on here now. Right now, we're just, you know, bringing people on, let, let, letting the volume come in slowly so that we can make sure everything, all the bugs and kinks are out before we open the floodgates on it. But I think there's going to be massive accounts uh, jumping on almost instantaneously. I have one account with 2 million subscribers uh, on this platform that are looking to move over to 4B2. So that's going to be huge. Definitely, definitely. That's going to be, I mean, that's going to be, 4B2 is going to be a game changer. Yeah. And um, I definitely, like I said earlier, I look forward to uh, being a part mm -hmm. of uh, the future of, yeah. um, you know, this 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 YouTube type of platform, so uh, where you know you could talk and do live streams for over sixty minutes and upload things that won't get censored. That that's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, I want to thank once again. I want to thank everybody in the I Magi Nation workshop chat. Uh, couldn't get to all the questions today, but uh, Billy will be on during the week uh, to answer more of your questions, and we're going to have this awesome uh, uh, breathwork. Um, session that he's doing on Sunday. 
So everybody will get a link to that. That's going to be absolutely amazing to teach us how to, how to, how to engage in a proper way of breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that family, like I said, um, me and Billy will probably do another workshop in September. Uh, me and the brother's going to talk about that. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested, definitely make sure you holler at me. Um, and so I can put you uh, ahead of the list because there might be uh, limited slots available. But besides that, Billy, man, congratulations on everything. Mm -hmm. Great job with the I, I Magi Nation workshop. And everybody, oh, everybody in the um, workshop also, we will do an instructional video for the vacation packages uh, before the week is out. So stay tuned for that. But besides that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Black Magic 363. This is Brother Rich with Billy Carson, and we're going to see you next time. Peace. Peace.